have absolutely no idea what happened to that sexy ass spider, but if anybody can leave me their most creative theory in the comments section below, you may win internet cookies, because that is one of the more we funnier glitches I've encountered in the game. What is going on, all you sexy people? This is Manufactured Opinion here, bringing you another Lords of the Fallen video. And today we're going to talk about the Shard of Heroes, which allows you to respec your character, both class and attribute points. And we're also going to talk about the three shrines of um, omnis, a bird, Anubis. I actually, I can't remember the name off the top of my head, but uh, I've seen some different question threads around the internet uh, asking where these particular signs are, um, and I'll be showing you that in this video as well. But just to backtrack a little bit, you'll saw that you'll see that at the beginning of the video, I picked up the Northern Monastery key, and you'll see I'm, I'm failing here multiple times, but um, that is right after you fight the first warden. You're going to head down the stairs, um, and you're going to see you're going to see in that little alcove the key right there. It's very hard to miss. What I want you to do with said key is run all the way back to right before the first uh, warden boss fight where Kalso was standing. If you look to the right, you will see a little white curtain that you're able to jump to using your sexy ass parkour skills that I do not have. You'll obviously have a much easier time. I cut out uh, a lot of this video. I think I failed seven or eight times. As you guys know, I'm, I'm the parkour genius savant, if you will. Um, but all you have to do is jump to that white curtain um, jump over to the door at the end of said passageway and you will pick up the shards of here or the shard of heroes I should say put the wrong emphasis on the wrong syllable um, what I want you to do with that shard is bring it over to the second boss fight the commander and you'll notice that there's three statues in the courtyard now each statue is attributable to a uh, different class. The, all, the one all the way on the left is Rogue, the one in the middle is Warrior, and the one all the way on the right is Cleric. Now what these allow you to do is actually not only respect your attribute points, but also your class. So if you make it this far, and you feel like playing a different class, or you feel like respecting your attribute points, uh, this is the perfect chance to do it. Me personally, and I recommend this, is I'm saving it just in case I find a weapon later on in the game that I think looks really cool or I find out has a really cool move set. Uh, I will come over and respec so I have you know the necessary attribute points to use said weapon. So I'm going to save it for now. I'm conserving it, maybe being a little bit too conservative, but I don't want to respec, respec just yet. Um, not really ready for that, so I'm, I'm going to hold off. Um, but obviously, obviously, it's up to you. But just to recap, Northern Monastery Key, bring it to where you, before you encounter the first warden, jump behind the white curtain, grab the shard, bring it to the second boss, three statues in the second boss courtyard, and you will be able to respec your character there. Now, on to the three signs of Anubis, as I'm going to call him from now on. Uh, from the quest giver, you're just going to follow this path. There's two right on this bridge, right before the second boss fight, or right before the save point before the second boss fight, if you want to get more specific. And the third one is actually you know, prior to that, when you're leaving the first warden tower, I guess it's called, or the northern, um, the northern wing. There's one actually right on that ledge there as I just absolutely demolish people with persistence. Still love that sword, I'm on to new and better things at this point, but uh, still loving that sword, especially that backstab. Oh my god, so sexy. Just, just give me a moment to myself here. Okay, okay, I'm good. But uh, yeah, after you, after you find all three signs, make sure that you have the ring equipped when you activate them. There is a glitch where if you don't have them, you can still activate it, but it won't actually counter towards the quest. I did encounter that in my first playthrough, so I had to make a completely new save. So make sure you avoid that at all costs. And um, once you turn the quest in, you will get the compass ring, which is super useful. It makes these cool little noises when you're near treasure. Um, and I've already used it multiple times. It's what I keep on when I'm exploring different areas. So, I hope you guys found this video useful. Very quick video on a couple of things. Um, if you're enjoying these guides, uh, let me know in the comments if you want to see more. I have plenty of videos in the pipeline that I would love you guys to see. Uh, I know there's a few people out there that want me to do a playthrough. That will be in the pipeline as well. So let me know your thoughts in the comments section. Would really like to see that. Um, but I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you're enjoying Lords of the Fallen. If you are playing, 
and always and most importantly, I hope you're enjoying life and I will see you in the next video everybody. Take care now.